Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5, but today we're going to be talking about phones again. There were a lot of questions and comments about the video on upgrading your phones and whatever on uh, this weekend, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, customizing your phones. Of course, this is not going to be a technical video. I do have a technical video about how to install Lineage on the Nexus 5X phone process is going to be similar on most devices. There's a few differences and nuances. But today I want to give you the tools by which you can research to determine what phone do you want to get, what ROM you want to get, all of these types of little ins and outs that, uh, that we want to look into. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, dive on into this top five. Number one, you need to decide on your budget. One of the primary reasons most people left in that comment, in that video in the comments was, I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a phone. I mean, look at this, these new uh, foldable phones, $2,000, and they seem to break within a day or two. Um, but really the flagships that are good quality, they're costing upwards of $1,000 now. And it's, that's just kind of money that, that we don't have. Now for me, I know the Lineage phones are going to be coming out soon, um, not the Lineage, uh, the uh, Librem 5 phone will be coming out soon, a pure Linux phone, that'll be awesome. Uh, Pine is also working on a pure Linux phone. Those are good, but I don't budget that much money for phones. Uh, $600 I think is the base price of the Librem 5 last time I checked. I don't know what the, the Pine phone's going to be, but I don't spend that much money on phones. Phones are too easy to drop, they're too easy to break. And with enough customization, you can get a phone that does your deeds. Is this 100% secure and private? No, and nothing's going to be 100% secure and private. But have we taken enough steps to minimize as much risk as conceivably possible? The answer is yes, you can do that. And you can do that on as little as this phone right now costs $100. Now, the... the uh, do not have any more updates to this phone. The update, um, the update cycle has ended on that because the phone is a few years old at this point. But you can get, I believe, um, Galaxy S9s. I think uh, one of the the higher end uh, flagship phones from just a year or two ago will work perfectly fine. So whether you want to spend you know, a few hundred dollars, just a hundred dollars, you can probably find something. So the first step is you want to decide on your individual budget. How much do you want to spend? For my case, I just spend a hundred, two hundred dollars at the most on a phone. You know, if you break it, yeah, buy another one, not a real big deal. So number one, decide on your budget. Number two, we are going to start doing the research on the phones. You don't want to run out, buy a phone, and then sit back and go, how do I get lineage on this? You don't want to do that. You want to buy a phone going into it with as much research as conceivably possible. So there's a few places. Now, I think Lineage is probably the number one custom ROM. They do a few goofy things. Don't update them between like February and May or something. They, for a while, have tried these stupid New Year's trick or an uh, April Fool's Day tricks rather. Uh, which is completely dumb. Um, but other than that, they're very good. They're very solid. Their production, this phone's been in solid production for two years without any problem at all. So I can use use the phone the way I would use any other phone. So Lineage is definitely a good one. There are several other individual ROMs out there as well. So do a little bit of re research, maybe get on a start page or a DuckDuckGo and, and do an internet search for custom ROMs on phones, see what you get. And then you want to go on and figure out which ROM you want to use and then go to their download page and see over here on Lineage if you want to get, uh, we talked about Samsung earlier, so here's the list of the Samsung devices that will take it. So S9 Plus and the S9 both have Lineage builds. So you want to make sure that whatever you grab, you want to uh, start with your individual device so here's the different uh, OnePlus, here's your Google phones, Nexus 6, Pixel, XL, here's the 5X, 6P. So there's just a lot of different options that you have. So start with looking at what your ROM is uh, that you want to run and then see what is supported. And then the other place you want to check out is the XDA forums. 
So the XDA forums, these are the places where all of your phone geeks will hang out and they will talk about how you can get your various ROMs working on your various devices. You want to have uh, uh, Lineage is going to have some great tutorials, but you're also going to want to bounce some things off of your um, uh, your XDA forums as well. You can do a search. You can search for phone types. Uh, you can do, you know, you could probably search for installing Lineage on something. And then here's Lineage OS questions and answers. So you can start by just doing a whole lot of different research points, looking at the ROM websites, looking at XDA developers' websites, look around at all that kind of stuff, and that will help you do the maximum amount of research that you need to make sure that you're, uh, you are going to pick up the best phone for your choice. So start with the research. Don't go out and say, oh, I got a great deal on a phone, and then how do I get something on it? Start with the research first. Don't rush out and buy something right away. So that's my number two, consult the forums and ROM websites. Number three, know the phone source. Okay, most phones in a uh, in an open marketplace, they're going to be a safe place to go. So like if you want to buy a phone from Amazon, actually GameStop, you can buy phones from. There's a few other third party uh, sales places where you can pick up used phones. I always buy my phones used. Uh, I just find that that you're paying half the price of the full retail in most instances, maybe you know maybe a little bit more than half, still a great deal. And it's just like buying a car. you know you never go in and buy a used car. The first year of it, the thing drops like 50 or more percent of its valuation many times. And then you trade the car in because there's some people that always got to have the newest car. They trade it in. You have a perfectly good car. The thing still has two or 300,000 miles available for it. It just costs half as much. Same thing as with the phones. I always get my phones used. Now, I also, though, check. Uh, you can get them eBay as well. I check Craigslist as well, and I'll get the phones from local sources as well. If you are using a Craigslist, a local source, you want to go check out the full stolen phone checker. So this website here is stolenphonechecker.org. You enter the IME, uh, IMEI number and submit it. It's going to spit back the number. It's going to tell you if the phone is reported stolen or not. This, is, of course, is not 100% but it's at least an extra step to check just in case. So where this will get its data is if you report your phone stolen by a carrier. Now, oftentimes your carriers can track down the phones. So stolen phones, is there's not a huge market for them because they're just too easy to track down. But nevertheless, if you are picking one up off of Craigslist, go ahead and run this. If you're buying it from an Amazon, they're probably already gonna have a, a firm grasp on this. You probably don't need to do that. eBay, 50-50. Uh, I would say. So make sure that you know the source. Now, there is a second reason you need to know the source. You need to know, was that phone originally purchased from a carrier or was that phone originally purchased from the manufacturer? That makes a big deal because AT&T, any phone purchased that was originated from AT&T cannot be unlocked. You cannot customize them. Okay, Verizon actually will allow you to unlock them, but I will always go preference buying the phone directly from the manufacturer. So when I bought my Google phone, I made sure that the person who I bought this phone from, I made sure they bought it directly from Google. If you buy it from an AT&T, a Sprint, a T-Mobile, you there is no customizing your phone that I know of. I could be wrong. If I am, let me know. But last I knew, they are perpetually locked. I know for a fact AT&T will not let you unlock. Sprint and T-Mobile, I think that's the case, but I'm not 100% sure. Verizon does allow you to unlock the phone as long as you are not under a payment contract. But if you purchase the phone, like Motorola, you purchase the phone directly from Motorola, you have to register uh, an account with Motorola to get an unlock code. If you do a Google phone, they just unlock without a problem. I think Samsung also just unlocks without a problem. Um, other phones, I don't remember. You'd have to consult the forums to see how to unlock those. So know the phone source, number one. Check if it's uh, stolen, if you're buying it from like an eBay or a Craigslist. 
If you're buying it from Amazon or a GameStop, it's gonna be okay. And then of course, double check where did the phone originate from? You wanna get a phone that came from, directly from the manufacturer. Those are gonna be the ones that you can un unlock. Certain phones from certain carriers, there is no unlocking the bootloader no matter how much you try. Number four, research your required apps. This is actually quite important because for me, I wouldn't want to run a custom ROM with Google Play services. That's the reason I'm running a custom ROM to get away from Google Play services. Now, some apps will not run without Google Play services, so you have to be uh, be aware of that. So you might encounter apps. One of them that I know uh, I recently was looking into for a friend of mine who runs a phone very similar to my build is that Snapchat has to have Google Play services. You cannot install Snapchat without it. So in that case, um, what we had to do there is we had just ended up just getting him just a, a throwaway $30 um, beater phone that doesn't have an account attached to it to use Snapchat with a few people that, that he would need it for collaboration stuff. But for the most part, he can use it without any of that. Now, uh, that being said, you want to do your research on your apps. And then don't be a stubborn little baby who says, I got to have my, you know, X, Y app, whatever it happens to be. Do a little bit of conscious thought. Is it worth changing apps? Is it worth a little bit of inconvenience to have a phone that is better protected, uh, better protects your privacy and your security? So, you know, if you want to use Snapchat, you're not going to be using Lineage unless you're going to install Google Play services. Now, I'm sure that there's justified reasons for installing Google Play services on top of a custom ROM. If you know what they are, please explain it to me. I'm, I'm genuinely curious why you would do that. Um, but uh, for me, I, got, I, I started running Lineage to get away from Google services altogether. So everything I run on my phone is a open source app. So every one of these applications I can run, you might have to swap things around. Like if you read eBooks and you got, uh, you know, you're used to doing them, reading them on your Kindle or whatever, you can use FB Reader or uh, a variety of other open source book readers instead. Now there's a little caveat that uh, if you're buying your books and they are, they are DRM locked, you will not be able to get those without uh, without um, breaking into the files, which may or may not be legal in your jurisdiction. I get around that by not buying DRM locked books. If you have Amazon books that are not DRM locked, you can actually extract them from your Kindle application on your current device and get a copy of those. If they are DRM locked, we don't touch that stuff on this channel, um, but mm, it might be possible, maybe, maybe not. So with that being said, though, you can get a ton of books that are not DRM locked. Uh, I use e-readers for things that you find on Project Gutenberg, which are all open source ebooks that are not DRM locked. They will work perfectly fine on a variety of different tools. So do your research and figure out what apps you need. Best place to go for this is look at F-Droid. There are a few other places to get apps. I probably wouldn't pick up apps from most places. Uh, what F-Droid does is they actually grab the source code and compile it themselves and they give you a signature so you can verify your application. So for example, I run K9 Mail as my mail application. Oh, it's I got K-9, okay. So K9 Mail is the best email client that I think uh, for this. Uh, you can pick up, you know, if you're running NextCloud, you can pick up your NextCloud over here, all your Next NextCloud applications. Uh, you can get, like I said, FB Reader. Let's see if FB Reader is still on here. Yep. So you can get FB Reader. I use Book Reader now uh, just because FB Reader has too many attempts to add on stuff. It drives me crazy. So I went with Book Reader. So you can pick up a variety of, of different applications. Um, so Firefox Klar um, is the default browser that I have. There's not a regular Firefox download, but there is a Firefox updater, I believe, which will allow you to grab it and then it will, there it is, the FF updater. 
This one here will actually allow you to put Firefox directly on your phone. You you download this guy and then this downloads Firefox and, and installs it. So you can use a variety of things. Now there's gonna be some applications you can't use directly. So you have to uh, you have to ask yourself if, uh, if that is worth it. Um, I think Spotify, um, this will download the latest Spotify. Uh, I think there used to be a um, something for getting Spotify in there as well. I don't use it, I don't know. But you can get onto F Droid and research. The other place is oftentimes your um, oftentimes your uh, app developers themselves will offer the downloads. So if you head on over to Signal's website, it's signal.org slash android slash APK, you can actually download Signal directly. This will download the APK file, and then you can sideload that directly into your device. Again, don't download APKs from a lot of weird sources. Go for F-Droid or directly from the developer. That's your safest bet, unless, of course, you're going to compile them yourself. So research your individual apps, know what you want to run, make a few compromises here and there, and figure out what information that you need. Can you develop a phone with your budget, with your ROMs, with your applications, and things like that? And finally, once you've done your research, then what you wanna do is gather all your files. Now, you don't just wanna grab your files to install your ROM, you also wanna grab a copy of the stock ROM. In case there's a problem with the phone or you want to restore it back at some point in time, you might need to uh, you might need to grab a copy of those other custom ROM files as well. Not every manufacturer makes them easily available. Uh, Google does. You can go right to Google's website and grab the original stock ROMs for all of their phones. They're all available over there. You can just download them. Now, what are you going to need to download? You're generally going to need to download a new system recovery system. So um, Twerp is the most popular one. Uh, that will basically, you put that onto your uh, onto your phone, and then that will allow you to flash and install other, other applications and other operating systems. You're going to need the custom ROM itself. You might need to download your APKs separately. Uh, so just grab all those things, and then, of course, grab anything you need to return your phone to stock should you need to. So gather all this information. Of course, make a backup of all your data. Doing this is going to wipe your phone. So with that in mind, that will hopefully get you started on how to uh, get your own custom phone created for yourself for more security and privacy. So let me know your thoughts, your tips, your tricks in the comments down below.